everybody wants to wants financial independence when you know wants to have you know time and you know what is that going to give you what is that going to buy you if you're hustling why have you been hustling and i think it really helps to know where it came from and what where are you going to go once you've achieved that If you're struggling with your vitality, energy, mood, focus, or sleep, this podcast is for you. Your host, Dr. Ann Sung, ER doctor and airspace flight surgeon, will help you reach for the stars and remove the barriers or blockades that have been holding you back from living your best life. If you've been challenged by your health, relationships, or productivity, then it's time for a breakthrough. So here's your host, Dr. Ann Sung. Hello, welcome to It's Not Rocket Science Show. I am your host, Dr. Ann Sung. Today, I'd like to talk about the why, the purpose of why you want to achieve financial freedom. We talk about it all the time because we want to have freedom, you know, have a lot of money, and we don't want to have to work, we don't have to trade time for money. But really, what is what has been that drive since you were little? Like, what really is how have you grown up and what really has propelled you to really want to achieve that? There's got to be some reason since you're little. And I'm going to take a deep dive of my reasons why. And we'll discuss uh, also what is your actual mission once you have achieved financial freedom? Because yes, you can achieve financial freedom and you can spend time with people. You can retire. You can go sit on the beach, drink pina coladas, but you're probably going to be bored. Most people I've talked to uh, became bored after a few months, and you really have to have a second purpose after that. And what is your mission? What is your purpose after that? So I think if you go back to prior episodes, I've talked about the five freedoms. You want to have uh, time freedom so you can go anywhere you would like, um, spend as much time on work or as little time on work, and it's basically flexible on your schedule. You want to have location freedom. You can be anywhere you want in the world and still be able to contribute to the world and do your work. And number three, you want to have vitality freedom. So what that means is that you want to have a fantastic health, not only good health, but you want to excel. You want to wake up with energy. You can just radiate the energy out to the people around you and it lasts all day and you can reach peak performance throughout the day with not, without help of caffeine, coffee, or anything like that. And you want to have emotional freedom. So emotional freedom is essentially you are so resilient or even what they call anti-fragile. You come out above any sort of challenges, any hardship, any harsh words, any criticism or any setbacks in your life. And you can take that in as a lesson. You don't go down in a downward spiral into depression and you come out in the optimistic, um, uh, with the optimistic point of view from it. So essentially, uh, Zen like a monk. <laughs> and then, of course, yes, uh, financial freedom is another one that's very, very common. And financial freedom is essentially your passive income where you don't have to put in time to work is coming in to the point where it can replace your current uh, salary, like your current standard of living. And even more, you can, you can contribute however much you want to. There's financial independence and the financial freedom. You can contribute what you want to, do what you want to. And really that for me is the ultimate goal. And so when I was looking back at what I would like, the reason why I push so hard to make money, make money, make money, I think it has to do with the fact that I was an immigrant from Taiwan. I moved from Taiwan with my mom. She's a, she was divorced. They were divorced when I was little. So it's just my mom and I, uh, when I was nine years old in Houston. And initially, um, she became a server at a Chinese restaurant and we were really poor. We essentially used a big cardboard box and flipped it upside down. And that was my dining table for the, uh, for I think like close to, a year maybe <laughs> six months to a year and 
we also couldn't afford anything larger than a one bedroom. So I was sharing a bed with my mom in the same bedroom until I was in high school. And I remember also just, uh, you know, the, the amount of like how tired my mom was when she worked at the restaurant. She worked at IHOP. She worked at Chinese restaurants. She would take the late shifts all the way till 2 or 3 a.m. to make extra money. And she worked seven days a week for a period of time, seven days a week. Can you imagine that? And I remember one day she, I was at home at late night because she worked the night shift till like 2, 3 a.m. And she came home so scared and just so fearful. And she was yelling uncontrollably. And it turned out that she was just robbed in the parking lot. And all of her tips that night were gone. And through the struggle of, you know, because she, she was actually fighting with the robber because it was her hard earned tips throughout the night. And so she struggled with him and wouldn't let her purse go. And so she suffered like sprains in her wrist and her arm and she was like dragged on the ground. Um, it was very sad. Um, it really imprinted on me at such a young age. I believe I was probably 10 years old that if you don't have money or if you have to work so hard for money, that is pain and suffering. And it was probably a loss of $50, $60. But to her, it was everything that night. It meant so much to her because it could have paid the electricity bills or the water bills. And so ever since then, you know, I didn't want my mom to suffer anymore. I thought that if I just made $100,000 a year, oh my God, that would be, I would be like a queen. We would be rich and we would be good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so that's what I strove for. I was like, I, 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 you know, from applying to medical school, I felt like I couldn't let my mom down. I have to reach financial independence. I have to be able to support you know, the family. I want to be able to pay off her house. So it would be like a shame to me and the family if I did not get into medical school, because to me, you know, not only it was a profession that could help people, but it was also something that could decrease the pain and suffering of the family. And so now the whys have evolved um, throughout the years. And that has been my strongest why really um, from since I was little all the way through. And now that I've reached that level, I've reached stability in finance, you know, I've reached that level and now it's, you know, now what really it's the five freedoms. Now you want to have emotional freedom, vitality, freedom. You want to have financial freedom, time and location freedom. And so those are my whys so far. If I, I want it, that's why I want to keep going. And I share that story with you because if you look back far enough, um, Everybody wants to, wants financial independence, you know, wants to have, you know, time and, you know, what is that going to give you? What is that going to buy you? If you're hustling, why have you been hustling? And I think it really helps to know where it came from and what, where are you going to go once you've achieved that? Because for me right now, I, I, not only do I want to achieve financial freedom, but I want to achieve it, you know, with peak performance, I want to achieve it, you know, with inner peace so that I'm not just go, go, go. And like forgetting my family and friends and, you know, my relationships, I want to achieve a sense of inner peace, fulfillment. I want to help people create more time to do what they want to create the vitality, create deep relationships so that they can do everything they want to do. Um, and when money's no object, when time is no object for me, then, you know, I really, really had to think deep about this. Um, my coach, Vikram Raya asked me this question, like, you know, multiple levels deep, really, when you reach that point, when money and time is no object, what are you going to do? What are you really going to do? You know, what do you want to change in the world? You do you have you ever thought about something that is so unimaginable that seemed out of reach? then, you know, maybe it is time for you to begin thinking about maybe it's not so imaginable out of reach. And so when you ask that question, 
asked for me, I thought about it for a while. And the first answer that came up was actually, I want to change school food, food policy, school lunches policy and breakfast, because I, I had no idea how to do that, you know, initially, but I just thought that if we can start from the early ages and change the school lunches to something or uh, the food to something that's low in sugar, that is whole food, plant-based, preferably Mediterranean, uh, real food, essentially, instead of fruit cups and juice, you give real fruits instead of uh, already well overcooked vegetables that's like devoid of any nutrients, you actually have fresh salads and vegetables and nuts and healthy fats that can you imagine like the microbiome and the inflammation of like the younger generation? I mean, there will be no issues. You put them on the anti-inflammatory diet in the very early ages and their microbiome will be set, will be healthy, it will be anti-inflammatory. The obesity, the chronic disease epidemic in the US, I think that is something we can address from bottom up. And I don't know how to begin to change policy. But after that question, it really got me started to think if anybody knows how to begin. I mean, I think Dr. Mark Hyman has talked uh, quite a bit about this as well. You know, I'm going to work really hard. That is my mission. I'm going to work really hard to achieve that level of stability. And, you know, in the end, in the future, when I have the money, when I have a lot of time, that's when I want to begin changing, like educate right now. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to be educating the masses, hopefully on, you know, nutrition and uh, diet, anti-inflammation, whole food. And in the future, my hope is to change the U.S. school food policy so that the kids can have what they need. And if anybody knows how to change policy or begin to change policy, maybe with the local schools, feel free to reach out to me at sungandmd at gmail.com, sungandmd at gmail.com, and uh, would love to collaborate. So I guess, you know, my call to action for you is number one, what is your why or what has been your drive in striving for financial freedom or financial independence for hustling? Why are you hustling so hard? Why are you doing so many projects and so much, so many different types of work? Why are you investing in real estate or this startup or this uh, company? And number two, once you have achieved that financial independence or financial freedom, ask yourself this question, or, you know, actually don't wait until you do that. Ask yourself that question now, because it takes that obstacle away from your mind. So you can get down to your true mission. If money and time were no object, what would you like to change in the world? What would you like to do? So, and I really want to thank you for your time and very grateful uh, for you to share this experience with me, please leave me a message on it's on rocketscienceshow.com. The show notes will be there. Contact me. I would love to hear from you or go to Facebook, go to my Instagram at uh, AnsungMD. Thank you so much. And remember, everything we need is within us now. That's it for today's episode. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week that posts a review in iTunes will win a chance in the grand prize drawing to win a private VIP day for a health and life makeover with Dr. Ann Sung herself. Then be sure to head on over to itsnotrocketscienceshow.com and pick up your free gift from Dr. Sung. Then join us on the next episode.